morning, church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Wonderful to see uh, all of you. I'm excited today. That's why I came early. <laughs> it's nice to be found in the house of the Lord. Those who, are, those who are found in the house of the Lord, they are always prosper. They are always blessed. And I'm blessed today. For many years, for many, many years, I have this inferior complex within me. Um, maybe some of you might not know, I'm a foster child. I was adopted by a missionary couple to this nation many, many years ago. They came during the Japanese World War from, from India, South India. They are very fair complex. They're very wonderful people who have served, who have served so in this nation for many years. At the age of 12, my dad passed away in Teluk Intan. Then my mother, uh, was a pastor, she moved into Klang, and I studied my high school, my schooling in ACS Klang for many years. In all my church life, I have this inferior complex. Looking at my mom, she's very fair, it's day and night. <laughs> but when, when people come, when people gather in school, there are sometimes they like to tease me. Please on the light at the daytime, they'll tell the boys. They know they're telling at me, you know. And then somebody, while in the canteen, say, take the kitchen, please. You know, they, they make fun of me. And um, I feel very inferior. These things have put me down, pulled me down many times. But when I dedicate myself, when I took baptism in 1975, the Lord healed me. Then I realized I am created in the image of God. And I look like God. I am the most handsomest man. Maybe today you might feel that same thing in your life. Not your color, but you might be, uh, 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 have some difficulties that you're going through in your life. Some failures. You need encouragement. You have difficulties in your working place. Things are going bad outside there. GST has hit you, your business. All things cannot be told. Your family life has been affected. Your children are not in order. But God wants to heal you today. We have a great God. Amen. Amen. And someone was telling me, <clears throat> can you distinguish or differentiate between um, finish and complete, complete and finish. Can you tell the difference, how to say complete and finish? And these things were told by one Goanese in London where he received five minutes of standing applause from the uh, uh, um, audience, they ask him to difference, differentiate, complete and finish. And he stood up, he said, when you get the right woman, you are complete. <laughs> and if you get the wrong woman, you are finished. <laughs> Later he continued to say, <clears throat> When the right woman catches you with the wrong woman, you are completely finished. <laughs> so God is a great God. He never finishes us. He completes us. Father, this morning, I'm privileged to stand before your children. Thank you for the safe journey you granted us. We can come and gather in your family, O oh Lord. We pray for our pastors who are away. We pray for our church leaders, the entire family members who are gathered here this morning, expecting a word from you to speak into their life. If there is anyone here expecting a miracle, expecting a challenge, expecting God to speak to them, O oh Lord, Father, I, speak, I, I pray that you speak through the word that I have taken from your word, O oh Lord. Your word is alive for Jesus. Let it manifest in the lives of people who are gathered here, Lord. Bless all of us. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is a difficult situation the nation is going through now. We like to condemn our Prime Minister. We like to talk bad about our Cabinet Minister. We like to say things in coffee shop. But nevertheless, we never realize God wants us to pray. Simply nobody come to the power without the knowledge of our Jesus Christ, who have ordained every government in this world. Amen? So in Matthew and in Tim Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2, reading verse 1 to 5, we read how God wants us to pray for the people in authority and even for the king. And it is in the Lord Jesus Christ that we have a harmonious and a wonderful life, peace in this nation. It is rest on our shoulder to intercede to pray for our government. Amen? So our family can be... You know, God uses the minority people. God uses, in Bible, we see God use one person. God will go to the poor. God go to the slum. God uses the fishermen to reach out to nation. So God will use us. God is waiting to use us, and he wants to speak through us. So it is our duty to pray for our government. Amen. Praise the Lord that we can celebrate continuously and we can enjoy the peace of God. We hear rumors around us, but we come to the knee and we, when we pray, God is waiting to rule over through us. And this is what happened in Luke chapter 5, reading verse 1 to 7. Somebody can read for me, please? Luke chapter 5. It's talk about the fishermen, how Jesus called them and... Simon Peter is there waiting with the de desperateness with his friends and family. Okay. Verse 1. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake of Genesaret. Verse 2. And saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Verse 3. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little, hand, a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Verse 4. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Verse 5. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Praise the Lord. Simon Peter could not catch any fish throughout the night. He's an expert fisherman. He knew the Sea of Galilee. He know what he's doing. And in that desperate situation, some of us maybe, in month of April, things were wrong with me. Suddenly, I have been working in this field for many years, for more than 30 years. I've been taking care of these children. Never I have gone through this fear that have gripped my heart. And so much so, I couldn't even put soap on my body. Fear gripped me. I start murmuring. I look for daylight every now and then. Every five minutes, I come out and see, is the sun arise? Every five minutes, I come out from my room to see where, what is happening, I couldn't sleep, try to sleep, you know, try to wake up, try to praise the Lord, you can't do because fear has taken over my life, fear has entered my heart, I couldn't praise God, I couldn't sing song, all this while I've been ministering to people, to children, I have been telling people, I have been encouraging people, but here I am in the lonely situation that I need somebody to minister to me. I read this scripture, how Simon Peter was the same situation, maybe with pride has entered to him, he don't want to tell it out. We pastors think that we are so great, we are counselors, we are mighty God, we are everybody, we want to tell about Jesus and suddenly we are hit. You know, we have, we felt discouraged. Nothing, because I have to take care of these children, there's something wrong in the home. Things were not right for many months after months. Finally, fear has grip over me, feeling uh, I couldn't concentrate on my work. 
my wife said uh, my heart beat became irregular. They rushed me to hospital to check, make a scan, just make me some more poorer by paying to the doctor. You know, and then he gave me sleeping pills. I took the sleeping pill, I couldn't sleep. It made me worse. Then my daughter came and said, Dad, what is going on? Don't you think that Jesus is alive? God whom we serve is alive. Life people will not grumble. Life people will be alive. They're supposed to give joy. If you have Jesus in your heart, why are you so sad? That really hit my head. I realized I have Jesus Christ who's alive. I'm supposed to be alive. Then I start worshiping the Lord, close my doors, close my room. I start speaking to God. And slowly I come out from this loneliness of this sickness called uh, fear that have gripped my heart. As I read this scripture this morning, or yesterday for the past one week, I was asking God, what am I supposed to share to this church? I'm only taking care of children. I need encouragement, Jesus. What am I going to encourage those people who are coming this morning from far and near? They'll gather to, learn, to hear your word. God says, speak from this word. And Simon Peter was in that situation where he's repairing his net and washing his net. Sometimes we need to be isolated. God wants us to be isolated. When I had my operation, my appendix surgery, you know, it was very painful. We men, I speak for men, huh? don't get angry with me, man. <laughs> Ladies, they, they give life. That's why they can go through the pain and they can bear children. They give life. We honor you. We honor all the mothers. You are great people. We get flu, we feel very sad. We need you to assist us. But I wonder how you can go through even with the sneezing, with the fever and cold, you can run the entire family. There was a man Elder of church is just a sharing purpose to cheer you up this morning. He, he complained to God. When he come back, he, he complained, wife said, please take care of children, please take me to town. He refused, you are full-time housewife, you take care. I am working, I'm tired. So Sundays, he come back home, he watch the TV. While watching TV, he read newspapers, he don't bother about children. And then, one day he complained to God, he said, God, I want to be a woman, please change me. I want to be a woman. He said, why? My wife is enjoying life, I have to work very hard. Day to night, I have to work overtime to feed my family. I don't want to work anymore, I want to be a housewife. God said, okay, that's the deal. You know, to make the story short, he said, okay, fine. And uh, he became a woman and the wife became husband. And the husband go to work. Now wife, he become wife, he has to take care of children, he has to cook early morning, he has to mix coffee for the husband, he has to, she has to send to children, bring back, you know, do all the housework, and he was very tired, he was sickening about it. He said, no rest. Then he realized how difficult it is for wife to take care and to run the household, though she is called the queen of the house, and it was very difficult. And after years passed by, he came back to God. He said, God, I'm very sorry. Please make me as a man. Now I realize how difficult a woman is. Please change it. God said, cannot. <laughs> so why God? Because you are pregnant. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sometimes humorous like that change. But Jesus... Simon was examining his, his net, washing his net. During this time, Jesus came to him and he borrowed his boat. And Simon was listening because in 1 John chapter, chapter 1, uh, verse 40 to 42, Andrew, his brother, already talked about Messiah, that John the Baptist has preached Andrew, who knew the scripture, Andrew, the brother of Jesus, have heard about this Messiah. Can you read? 
first john chapter 4 uh, chapter 1 verse 42 40 to 42 first john chapter 1 verse 40 to 42 As you know, I, I can't read because of my eyesight. Uh, that's why I want you to help me out. First John. One. Uh, no, sorry. John chapter one. Sorry. John chapter one. Verse 40 to 42. Here, Andrew. Verse four. <laughs> Testing. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Verse 41, He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. Verse 42, And he brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. Okay, so Simon, Peter, I mean, Simon has heard Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. And he was also listening to Jesus while Jesus was talking to the multitude, I believe. And here he is ministering to himself and loneliness. Christ has spoke to the multitude and then Christ calling him, uh, cast your net to the right, to the deep. Many times when we get into deep trouble come, God wants us to be lonely sometime. As I said earlier, I went for a surgery. I was in the hospital for some times. God spoke to me and God gave me a rest, a complete rest. There I realized how painful it is. Just a small cut but that make me realize how painful to the children when they are sick, to give them a special attention, how painful my wife have gone through delivering our children, that make me to be more compassion. It make me to go through the pain to understand other children that I'm taking care, to give them priority when they are sick, to attend to them, to nurse them. And I realized to be more compassion, more loving to people who are in pain. Simon is taught. Maybe he realized he's not an expert. Maybe he thinks his expert pride must come into him. But he let go. He gave his boat. In time of our difficulties, we are irritated. In time of our sadness, we get angry. In time of desperate need, we are so moody, we get anger very fast. We are tested that time, we need compassion, we, we look to human people to assist us. We want compassion, we want somebody, we want people to pity, pity us. We look for favors from people, we want people to come to our house. We like to communicate with people looking and we want them to participate. We want them to say, Ayo. You say, Ayo? Ayo. For English, for Chinese, for Malays, especially Indian, they like to say, Ayo, yo. You know, it is woe unto you. Say, woe unto you. So when you say, Ayo means what? So when somebody comes to your house and they look at the beautiful, wonderful house that God has blessed you, and they come, Ay, yo, brother, your house is so beautiful. First thing, they are releasing what? Curse. They say what? Ay, yo, woe unto you first. Then they say you are blessed. Do you like to receive this word? No, so please don't tell Ayo to anyone. Even you fall. Children fall, Ayo. Can't knock, Ayo. Condemn them first, then we say blessing to you. So be careful of what you are saying. We're supposed to praise God. 
somebody come and say, beautiful house, you must say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, brother, sister, your house look wonderful. You welcome them to the house, you give them orange juice. If they say, praise the Lord, very good, you give them coffee and tea, you welcome them to the house. If they come to your house and say, are you, are you so nice, then you give them bitter God. You say, good for your diabetic. <laughs> huh? Make it like that. So even you fall, that means, fa Pastor, how if my father die, people come and say, are you, I must receive, or people come and say, praise the Lord, whom you like to say? Now you tell me. Huh? If our beloved one die, we say, are you, we say, praise the Lord. Huh? Can you accept this word, praise the Lord, are you? I think twice before you say. Huh? Somebody, one pastor went to his, this church member's house, Pastor, my father passed away. The pastor said, praise the Lord. He gave one slap to the pastor. <laughs> you know, without realizing. Because the pastor said, praise the Lord. What can we say? Pastor, say praise the Lord because there's no more pain. Huh? God has called your father, praise the Lord for it. He thought, are you brother? You know, he wants to be crying with him. So that's how Simon or we might feel. Sometimes we need people to sympathize. We look for word of discouragement to enter into our life, to penetrate and pull us down. But we want people to encourage. And Jesus say, launch into the deep. When people go deep, gold and diamond are found on top. No, it is found on the deep ground. They dig, they dig and dig too for this beautiful stone for the gold. So the word of God is deep. When we read and meditate, when we spend time in prayer seeking God, isolate yourself. Once in a while it is good. God has given us 30 days, 31 days, 24 hours a day and night. So it is nice to praise God sometimes. We like to take a holiday, we isolate our family, we like to go, huh? but we never realize how important it is to come for prayer meeting, to come and talk to God, isolate ourselves and be encouraged ourselves because no one wants to encourage you. When you lose everything, nobody will come nearer to you. Nobody wants to be your friend because you have lost everything. But Jesus never failed you. Jesus no Simon. He said, cast your net to the deep. And they got multitude of fish and God make him rich. He was poor. He never wanted to go back home. All night he's tired. He's a busy man. But when he gave it to Jesus, he lent it to Jesus, and Jesus blessed him. So when we give to God in every area of our life, God is ready to bless us and to bless us. Hallelujah. Because it's going to be overflow. Simon Peter received and his family, his friends received Lord of fish and God make them rich. And then God called him, please follow me. And he left everything because he knew the Messiah. He found the Messiah. As Andrew, his brother, have already told him, I found Messiah. And God blessed him. So as I said, month of April this year was a very difficult task for us. I gather all the children. I told them, we wake up at 5.30 children. If I can, I can wake up at 5 o'clock. I make them to wake up at 5 o'clock. Before others praise God, we want to praise God. Before the birds and the animals sing song to Jesus, praising God, we want to praise you, God. We start praising God. And God slowly come into our life. Our children's life are getting transformed. Look, they are handsome, right? Beautiful children. They wake up in the morning. Today they wake up at 5 o'clock. Huh? Not because to come here early, but that is what their time is. And then they praise God. We just sing song. They'll be sleepy. I make them run. I'm a cruel father. I say, go around, go to two rounds, one come back. They are refreshed. So we praise God with all our mighty things. We sing song and we are blessed. Simon Peter was like that. So if you are like that, start talking to God. 
rather than we seek to our wife or children, our husband, or we complain, we start praising God. This is what happened to us. In Shepherd Center, nobody liked to see the orph orphans, so-called orphans, but we changed the status of children. They are gifted children. Hallelujah. Children are precious to the eye of God. And God wants to use these children because He chooses from the slum. He makes them rich. He chooses the poor and makes them rich. He chooses the weak and makes them strong. That is the way God deals. We do not know. We cannot understand because no one has seen God. And God is almighty. He wants to bless you. Like he has, he has blessed Simon Peter, He wants to bless you. If you give to God, if you bless your time with Jesus Christ. Amen? And God wants to bless you today. There was a pastor, uh, I, I really do not know what is the time now. Am I going fast or slow? Yeah? You have some more time, right? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, so this pastor's name is Joshua. He was in, in Tamil Nadu, north of India. He was brought up in the orphanage home. He was brought up in the godly manner. He grew up in the orphanage home. His parents abandoned him because he's a hyperactive child. He cannot stand still. While growing in the orphanage home, the staff who was taking care of this boy and one day cannot, take his, cannot tolerate, tolerate his, 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 his um, uh, uh, um, um, ability, cannot control him because he's so hyper. One day out of her anger, she dip him in the hot water. And, and, and his both legs are uh, 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 boiled, you know. The skin came out. And in India, nothing can be happened, you know. So they put medicine, nothing came out, and he was like that. And he always wear long pants because the skin have deformed. And uh, he grew up at the age of 18. He couldn't, he followed the pastor. He's an uh, assistant to the pastor. He carries the bag. He keep the pastor's car clean. He sleep outside. He's all in all for the pastor. He take care of the church. He sweep the church. He wash the bathroom. He, he makes sure that everything is okay. That is his task. Wherever pastor go, he carries pastor's bag. And the pastor gave given him a, a watch and a nice Bible, and he walks with the pastor. That was his work. And he time, spent time praying because he's a rejected child. He's rejected. He's unwanted. But God is speaking to him slowly. God is speaking and whispering to his ears, asking him to come out from the church. Every time God speak to him, he couldn't take it. And finally, there was a meeting conducted for senior pastors in Chennai, and uh, all the pastors' assistant was at the back. All the senior pastors were in front. There were uh, a missionary from U.S. have come while preaching to these senior pastors, ordained ministers, and he looked at the back. God spoke. The Holy Spirit came upon him and spoke directly to Joshua. He called by the name. You are sitting at this chair. He called him. God want you to come out, and God already, you know, um, ordained you. God is speaking to you. And time for you to leave the nest. Prophesy over him. Call him front. Lay hand and prayed for him and went off. So that day, the pastor, senior pastor was going in the car. Joshua was beside him. These white people all come like that. They'll talk like that. You know, they, are, they will tell and they go, nothing wrong with you, right? So, but day and night, God is speaking to him. God is speaking to him. God is speaking to him. And he, he has this fear to approach his father, to tell him how God want me to go to north. God want me to go to north. Finally, one day he took encouragement in the Lord and he went to the pastor and said, Pastor, I have to go. The pastor said, Ayo. He cursed him. He rebuked him. This is what you are going to do. I curse you. You will not survive out there. He took his Bible, take whatever he has given the watch, he take everything. But Joshua had been preparing himself. Every time he get money, every time he get offering, he save it up. And he was chased out of the house. He took a bit of track. He went to Karnataka, language that he can't speak things that he cannot understand. He went, uh, uh, took a train, he went north to a place where he don't know anybody. 
There he start ministering, giving tracts to people, and he sleep sometimes at the station. Uh, um, um, he sleep wherever he can find. As days goes by, the finance is going down. He's getting poorer every day. Didn't take bath. No clothes to change. Beard is growing, young man, you know. Finally, one day, he end up in the slum, and every time he wake up, there will be coin. People thought he is a poor beggar. They put, out of somebody, they put some coin. With that coin, he start buying things, food, and body deteriorated. Finally, eyesight affected, blurness because of his hunger. And there he looked up to God. He said, this is what God you spoke. Is that Jesus Christ has spoke to me? I'm hungry. Is the real Jesus who has spoke to me, who has come prophesy over me? He started questioning himself because he is not a stable person now. And at, at the moment, as he was looking out, there was a lady walking through. Walking through, a rich lady walking through, coming, coming by him. He is expecting that the lady might give him some food, some money. The last pamphlet in his hand is reaching out. God bless you, sister. Please take this, read it out. Jesus love you. And the lady looked at him. He said, are you man of God? She said, he said, yes, I am a man of God. Can you pray for my husband who is dying in two hours time? He's going to die in hospital. His kidney has failed. Doctors have called me to tell all my relatives. I'm rushing to tell. But before that, if you are a man of God, please come and pray for my husband, she cried. And Joshua went, don't know what is going to happen. He did not know what to happen. He went with fear, with hunger, can't walk. And he went and he prayed for this man who is with the tube all over, you know, body is bloated. And he just lay hand in Jesus' name, be healed. That's it. The man stood up. Water, urine just came out. Nurses came to him. Something was wrong with this man. He stayed for next two days in the hospital. He's discharged. Hallelujah. Amen. God healed this man through this beggar called Joshua. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, God has a purpose. God wants to do something through you in this town, in your working place, in your family. God wants to use you as an instrument. He's waiting for you to come before Him. Because God has given us the authority in the book of Isaiah chapter 45 verse 11, God empowered us to question Him, to give Him the order to be healed. Hallelujah. Somebody can read for me Isaiah 45 11, to considering His children. God has given us the authority to order to His hand. But many times we never do that. We ignore the authority that has been bestowed upon us. Can you read? Verse 11. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and His Maker, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and, and concerning the work of my hands, you command me. Mm. God wants us to command Him. You see, what a privilege we got. We have the right to order God to move. We have the, given the authority concerning our children. Hallelujah. And it is in your hand. You know what happened to Joshua after that? Evangelism, that lady whose husband is healed, she went around and telling, there's a Samyar here, there's a, 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 a man of God here, please come. The entire people start visiting him. Now Joshua's status is changed. There was another lady, give him a small plot of land. Please build a church here. And Joshua with the offering, that man who was healed, he gave him two lakhs. 200,000 uh, two, rupees. Huh? And they put up a small church there. Now instantly Joshua got a church. Uh, it's a poor church. And everybody coming, Joshua is getting busier and busier. Of course, no more beard. Everything shaved off, very clean and nice. Church is growing, work is going on. There came a senior pastor of the town who's from the Assemblies of God Church. He was watching at night, watching him. Every night he come. For the past two weeks, I've been watching this Joshua. Evening, he come in the car, he park, look at him, and he go. One day, the senior pastor came. You are Joshua? Yes, sir, I'm Joshua. The Lord speak to me. God has been speaking to me. 
my son-in-law to be is in the hotel there. But God spoke to me and to my wife, there, saying that you are my son-in-law. You are my son-in-law. He wants my only daughter to marry to you. Oh, wonderful, right? <laughs> say wonderful, say praise the Lord. Huh? Somebody, I, huh? where God, people come and get daughter to marry. Huh? Rich pastor, you know, senior pastor, everything God. And he said, I'm an orphan. I'm a rejected. I'm not highly educated. The girl is finished her master's and you want, to, want me to marry? No, God has spoke to me. Somehow they got married, the, the daughter came in. You know, things went wrong, but Joshua was there. And suddenly there was a Korean woman visited Joshua. With three other pastors from Chennai, they came, visited Joshua. First thing the lady came and lift up his leg. Two legs. She said, you are my son. You are my son. I have taken you. I, God has shown me in my dream. Back in Korea, I've been praying for you. Every time I come, they cheated me. But here I am with a lot of money she gave him. And the church have associated with the work. And they built a large, very big church. Instantly, Joshua became a rich man, rich pastor. Status have been changed. But he still never let go that God is with him. Jesus is with him. Joshua became very rich, very famous, but the hand of God is still with him. Now Joshua went to, after many years, Joshua went to a world conference in Seoul, Seoul, and he wanted to see his mother. You see, this is a true story that I heard. I'm telling you, I want to share you to you so that you can be encouraged. And Joshua went to see, and there was a large group of people gathered in this house, and he can see from far, he can hear people are praising and worshipping God. Hallelujah. Joshua went with the address and saw the dying, in the dying bed, the mother's, mother is going to go off any time. Suddenly, Joshua went there, saw the mother is dying. She said, I knew you will come. Joshua and she Give Joshua's hand to the father and say, this is the son we have adopted in our prayer that we have taken as our son. And Joshua, she told in front of the pastor, all my belonging, every wealth that I possess in Korea belongs to you. Hallelujah. What uh, instant richness have come. But Joshua, instead of receiving all his wealth, he gave it to the church, the pastor, you know, and how transformation take place from a rejected child, a pastor who have condemned him, but in due time, God raised him. How wonderful is the same like Peter. Peter lost everything. Peter gave up his boat, gave out his work. And again in Peter, Peter's life, Peter went back to the sea. When Jesus, they saw his hero has gone. In chapter 21, verse um, uh, 6 or 3, Three to six, we see in John chapter 21, we see again Peter, Simon Peter saying to his disciple, his friends, I'm going fishing. And everybody joined him. Everybody, other, other, other apostles, other leaders joined him and they go on going with him. Again, the same thing happened and they couldn't catch anything. God is ever forgiving. God also blessed him again. And they caught 153 large fish. Not only large fish, and before the fish was brought to the shore, the fish was already grilled by Jesus Christ. You see how good God is to us. God will never judge us. God is ever forgiving. Even we go away from God. And this is the Peter. After he left, he said, Silver and gold, I have none. But the name of Jesus is command to the lame to walk. The authority is given to him, to Jesus Christ, to use his name, only the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus and the devil will flee. Hallelujah. The evil will depart. Authority is given to us to use his name. That's why we are called sons and daughters. Hallelujah. And no one has received it. Only those who have accepted Jesus as his personal savior have the right 
and their power is given up to them. So we may fall, we may backslide, but God is there to redeem, to build us up. If your business is down, come back to Jesus. If you are down in every situation, God knows you because he, he knew you before you are, you are formed in your mother's womb. Our Lord knew us. He is always graceful to us. He is full of mercy. And the Lord will continue to bless us. It is not easy to take care of two children. You know, right now I have 80 children. They are 80 characters. Not only 80 characters, 21 full-time workers. That is an additional 21 characters. <laughs> uh, plus I have four children, got four characters. Plus a beautiful wife. <laughs> 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 Another character. <laughs> so, and you can see my head, natural, bald, you know, it's not shaved. You know, grass will never grow in a busy street. Amen. But God's anointing is there. I tell you boldly today, I tell you boldly, and I want you to practice this. If you can, speak to Jesus early in the morning. Anytime you get, you speak to Him. You know, we have been associated with this church since 1995, December 96. It have been almost uh, 19 years, I believe. Uh, Liz was a small child. She's a pretty woman now. Wonderful. And some of you silently have been a partner with our work. We are grateful to you for your investment, a silent investment in the kingdom of God on earth. Wonderful. And uh, since the year 2005, we... We, we stop writing to people. We stop asking people for funds because we realize God is great. Every time we speak to God, when the refrigerator is empty, I call the children, lay hand, what do you want? Oh, you want sotong? You command sotong to come in. <laughs> you want fish? You, I mean, I tell them practically what you desire for because anything you ask in my name, Jesus say. He will give, he will bless. So that's a word. Word is alive. So you speak. Within one week, we'll have our next one month's food stuff has come. Sometime overflow, we have to give it to other people. Now, GST has hit. You know, the price of vegetable gone up. But Bukit Buruntung, we have a nice big house where 40 children can be accommodated. If you are passing by Bukit Buruntung, why is it called Bukit Buruntung and it is always abandoned place? But when the saints of God gather in that place, situation is changing. You think that you can buy a $10,000 house? Past two years ago, you can buy an apartment for $10,000. Now it is called 100000 Hallelujah. Price is going up. If you have invested in Bukit Buruntung, hold on to your property because it's going up. Amen. Amen. God will change situation. So we have a piece of land at the back. We planted some vegetable. You know, we cut costs about three to four thousand every month. We got nice vegetable there. We got brinjal. We got uh, uh, ladies' fingers. We got so many other vegetables. Bayam, sabi, whatever you call. Plus that, we have nice chicken. And we got nice four German shepherd to guard the place. So if you enter the place, be careful. That are black dogs, you know, and they are working dogs. So praise the Lord. God can change and meet all our need when we pray to Jesus Christ. Since 20, 2005, I challenge you, church. I never write to anyone. I never publicize. I never seek funds. I never write to anyone. I boldly say we are not funded by the state government, neither we are funded by the federal government. One of the unique homes in this country that only speak to Jesus Christ for every resources. Amen. Beside our church, there's only one more church that have given one-time love offering throughout last year. No church have funded us. It is always Jesus brought the people. All we need is four checks enough. Every day our expenses is 2,500. That means one day 2,500, 
One month is 75,000. Is it possible for us to survive when some of you getting 2,500 at one month's salary? That is one day's expenses for us. It is Jesus who blesses us. Let us arise. The same Jesus is here to bless you, to honor you. If you speak to him, you speak to him, you command his hand to move into your life, change your situation, be possessed of the Holy Spirit, the Lord will change your course. Amen? The same Jesus that we have, the same Jesus that is in with the home will also bless you. The ch you know, the children's church is blessed. The children are multimillionaires. They, somebody, they bought a house for 150,000 ringgit. Today it's worth 1.5 million. Hallelujah. The house they have, a shop lot, they, it was fully for 145,000. It cost 1 million today. That means they are no more often they are millionaire. Hallelujah. See how God changed the situation? So you are part of this work. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Let us stand. And we thank God. Change. God will change the same Peter who have received the blessing. We also will use the name of Jesus. And God wants to empower us this morning. Father, this morning, I'm so privileged to share your testimonies. How you good are, you are to us. Lord, when we intercede, when we spend time, when we come deeper into your presence, O Lord, when we praise your name, when we worship you, O Lord, our situations are changed, O Lord. Circumstances are changed, O Master. Our depths are gone, O Father. Blessing has come into our life, O Jesus. The same Jesus has empowered us, O Lord, to use your name. In Jesus' name, we have victory. In Jesus' name, we have prosperity. In Jesus' name, we are healed, O God. So, Father, if anyone among us this morning who need you, O Lord, please touch them in Jesus' name. Prosper them. Enlarge your their territories, O oh God. May your name be lifted up, O oh God. May your name be glorified through you, O oh Jesus. Father, forgive us for our wrongdoing, O oh Master. We submit ourselves, the entire congregation, to you. We lift your name. In Jesus' name we ask and the church say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for having me.